So there's a lot of shooter games out there, and I know a few people who stay away from them, mainly because of how oversaturated the market is. That being said, each game does play differently. Saying every shooter is the same is just like saying every fighting game is the same. There's a lot of nitty gritty details that make each of these games feel different. Whether it's floaty physics, smaller hitboxes, or a more realistic approach, each game feels different. It's also why someone can be great at one game and struggle a lot in another. Someone who's good in Overwatch, for example, may struggle with Rainbow Six Siege because of how drastically different everything is. For this video, we're going to look at one element that makes each of these games play differently. Maps are a big part of making these games feel great. If they're too simple or too linear, it makes the game feel restrictive or boring. If it's too open or complex, it can slow down the gameplay and make it feel too random or non-competitive. At the same time, a map may play well in one game, but not so great if they were put into another. So first, let's look at a typical tried and true layout, the three lane map. Three lane maps are the bread and butter of most shooters. You start with one lane down the middle, which is usually the most dangerous. Then you have two side lanes, and along with this you also have two or more connectors that would allow players to rotate from one lane to the next. This is Dust 2, one of the most iconic maps of all gaming. So much so that other games, typically free-to-play games, copy the exact same layout with some minor changes. Now why is this map played out so much, and why do many people enjoy it? Well, because the layout makes for some great gameplay. Both the middle and the right lanes can be monitored by a sniper, then the connector from the middle lane to A site, aka short, can be used for a more close-up fight. Now although this map is good, it may not work well with other games. Imagine if this map is being placed into Overwatch or Rainbow Six Siege. It may fit one game more than the other, but it wouldn't play the same way. It probably wouldn't play all that well. So we come to a crossroads with a map design, knowing what kind of shooter you're making. If it's one with heroes and flying and verticality, you'll want maps that will have sniper perches and second floors to buildings that would allow for each hero to excel. If it's a more grounded hipfire game like CSGO, then three lane maps with choke points and connectors will typically work well. That said, 3 lane maps also work well with other games, such as Call of Duty. Shoot House is a new map that is a very simplified 3 lane map. This is about as linear as it gets while still being fun. But of course, we have to ask, why is it fun? Well, there's a lot of gadgets and gizmos that can be used in Modern Warfare. RPGs and explosives to clear the way, a smoke grenade with thermal optics to get some sneaky kills, and a trophy system to counter pretty much all of that. And of course, kill streaks. Because there's a lot more of to Modern Warfare than just a gun and a grenade, it allows a map like this to actually flow, and not feel too stale or stagnant. Of course, there will be times when one team is really struggling, but that can happen on any map. If we were to try again and paste Shoot House into CSGO, it most likely wouldn't work as well as it does in Modern Warfare. That's not to say it wouldn't work at all, but it is a different type of shooter. Now lastly, let's look at another category of maps. One where the three lane map layout may still apply, but typically doesn't. Realism or realistic maps try to lay out in a way that is accurate to a real-life counterpart, be it a factory, an embassy, or a city square. Of course, in concept, this does sound really cool, visiting real places and running around in them. It's also cool to see them being used for a campaign or a mission and having to traverse these streets while chaos unfolds. Of course, these locations aren't really made for firefights. That said, you can look at a game like Red Orchestra. Red Orchestra is a Nilsim type game where they have a more slowed down realistic map design based on real life battlegrounds. However, a realistic battleground doesn't really flow the same way as most video game shooters do. They're slow, they're very open, making it near impossible to flank or outmaneuver the enemy lines, and instead you just have to sit in the trenches, wait for artillery, and you really just feel like a pawn on a chessboard. Obviously, this type of map design isn't for everyone, or for every game. So let's look at a smaller example of a realistic map. So a lot of these realistic maps tend to not play all that well in multiplayer. Piccadilly is an example of this. There are liberties taken of course, as is for most realistic maps. So for Piccadilly, they added scaffoldings to one side and made some minor stylized choices for certain areas. Of course, there is a few troubling issues that make this map mostly unplayable in multiplayer. First off, there's not really a middle ground on this map. The middle of this map is empty and open. On one side you have buses and that lines up to make a narrow walkway, 
and on the other side you have a fountain with not really any additional objects or cover. This means that the majority of the fights are going to take place on the sides of the map, or rather, one side of the map. This makes the fights in this map become very stagnant. Everyone continues to fight in the same lane, while the other two lanes are occupied by sniper fire of some sort, or the occasional player who's trying to flank. Now everyone's going to have their own thoughts on this map, some may love it while others don't. That's it, at the end of the day, you do have to decide based on statistics. How many people are playing this map? How many people play until the end of the match? What are the typical scores? Is it one-sided most times, or which side tends to win most often? This information, which obviously we don't have access to, is what would tell us which maps are good and which ones are not. A look into Rainbow Six Siege, we have Oregon, a map designed from a real-life event. However, Rainbow Six Siege plays very differently compared to any other shooter. With that said, the map itself would have to be designed within the parameters where it would still be balanced and work. Just recently, the map was also redesigned to make it more balanced. This is really one of the better ways to work in a realistic map. Something that resembles the real thing, but still plays well. It's great to see maps based on reality making into games, but these kind of areas aren't really designed for combat. There's a lot of open areas and too many lines of sight that would be far too difficult for the typical player to excel in. However, because of the pace of Rainbow Six Siege and the gameplay elements in it, a lot of these advantages can be taken away. It's perfectly fine if you do enjoy Oregon, Piccadilly, or any other realistic map. More power to you. Just that the game should be designed in a way so that the majority of players find the map enjoyable. I know that means a good portion of people may not get their way, but it is for the greater good. At the end of the day, it would continue to challenge these developers to create well-designed and balanced maps that everyone can enjoy. So that's what I wanted to cover in today's video. I know I could have gone for an hour talking about this and bring a lot more examples into this video, but I figured these maps in particular would be drastic enough to get my point through. So uh, what are your favorite maps? Which ones do you hate the most out of any game? Let me know and I'll see you guys next time.